Hey, what's happening guys? Uh, today I'm going to try and answer a question from one of my viewers, uh, Mr. VK Kapoor. I'm not even going to try and pronounce your first name, buddy. I don't want to insult you. And the question you asked is an excellent question regarding peripherals, I guess we call them, or components um, used with an Arduino project that require more current than the Arduino is able to supply or sync natively. Now, just a quick refresher if you are uh, unfamiliar with the Arduino, I mean I'm not going to go over the whole Arduino, just each of the I.O. pins for the Arduino is able to sync or source a maximum of 40 milliamps. But that doesn't mean you can put 40 milliamps on each pin because we're looking at 200 milliamps total for the entire Arduino. So obviously what we need to do is use an external power source to power both our Arduino and our component. And there's a bunch of steps to get into and in how to do this. I'm going to try and keep it as simple as I can. The most key component we have to remember is our grounds. We have to share the same ground. We have to have the same reference to what is zero volts in every component we use in our system. If we don't do that, at a minimum, things won't work the way you expect them to work. And in the worst case scenario, you could burn up everything. So obviously, like I said, we're going to start with the external power source. In this case, we're just using my little old power supply here, and we're feeding it 10 volts. If you take a look here, power is just being fed in here to the power rail on the breadboard. And then when we go up to our Arduino, the power goes to the VN pin. Pretty simple so far, right? Right. So, how are we going to control our component? In this case, it is a simple 12 volt incandescent bulb. Well, we're going to use a transistor. Then the next question becomes, what kind of transistor? Are we going to use a BJT or are we going to use a MOSFET? Which of these is the better choice? My friends, you could write a doctoral dissertation on which is the better choice. There are just so many, that's where I'm looking for, intricacies that we need to take into consideration to make a scientifically solid answer, but don't worry about it. A couple things to keep in mind will put you on the right path and everything will go smoothly. So first let's talk about the BJT and the MOSFET. All right, there's a symbol for our bipolar junction transistor. In this case, we are going to be using an NPN. We have the collector, the base, and the emitter. Now, our BJT is, has a current controlled response, a small current fed into the base. So we have a small current flow between our base emitter junction, allows the transistor to act basically as an amplifier and a large current can flow between our collector emitter junction. Uh, we have to keep in mind that it will not conduct until we surpass what we call the voltage drop, the uh, silicon voltage drop, which is about 0.6 volts. So whatever we're feeding into this, we're automatically gonna have a minimum 0.6 volt drop going into it. Just know that keep in mind it's not a big deal I mean unless you're yeah you know, unless half a volt is, is something that you know you're needing somewhere else but in general it's not a big deal to worry about now our MOSFET is a voltage controlled device basically you forward bias it at the gate and boom it is going to conduct it will also act as an amplifier so physical differences if we want to if we want to take a look at that 
look at our BJT symbol here everything is connected look at the MOSFET and you see here there is no connection between the gate and the drain source uh, components here it is a capacitively coupled gate does it matter? not particularly but it has a couple advantages the first advantage is the resistance here is infinitely high so you can really kind of discount the resistance of this component in your overall system so like we said a small current is required to keep the transistor in the on state conducting once we apply some current to the base we have to keep the current on the base so for instance we use this potentiometer here to power that up now we're getting current through here it's going it's coming from our power supply through the transistor and out to our bulb but if we stop that current flow then the bulb goes out the MOSFET on the other hand once we've charged that gate once we've got some electrons bing bonging around in there it is going to stay on until we reverse bias that is that important again eh, not particularly but it's a good thing to know because it can be used to your advantage and if you don't pay attention to it it could possibly bite you on the tuchus so the big question which is better for Arduino usage the answer is how much time do you have again like I said we could write many scientific papers over this but it's not necessary in my opinion that's all this is it's my opinion based on my experience of course the MOSFET is going to be better for us in this case why well because I said so <laughs> when we're dealing with the Arduino the one thing that we have a direct control over is voltage that's really all an Arduino is doing when we are telling it to when we're not telling it to read from a pin and we're telling it to turn a pin on we are controlling the voltage of that pin now we can control the current I mean you can con you, you, you can t uh, basically transmorgify voltage in the current through the use of a resistor or any other load but just to keep it simple in our minds we have direct control over voltage so we can use a MOSFET now why would we want to do that well one of the main reasons and the one that comes to the top of my head here besides the ease of use is heat so let's let's power this little guy back up here that's uh it's it's fully open it's got five volts coming into it well actually has 4.4 because you got to remember we've got that little voltage drop going in there and if we come up here and we take a look at our power supply we're giving it a maximum of 0.3 amps let's call it a third of an amp so how do we figure out power watts well that is a simple calculation grab a pen here where you can read it power equals I times V so our power is our current which in this case is 0.315 milliamps times our voltage which in this case is 10 volt and that is going to give us 1.5 watts 1.5 watts doesn't sound like much but it is going to be for that little BJT in this case it is a 2N2222 my favorite transistor maybe it's because of the numbers works with my OCD <laughs> I'm not quite sure but that's gonna get hot yeah it's, it's already extremely hot to the touch so you have to now start calculating in uh, your thermal properties and that can burn up because uh, bipolar junction transistors very easily go into what's known as thermal runaway 
which is why when we set up our transistor, and this is just rudely and crudely done here for demonstration purposes, is we generally, well not generally, we, we, we mostly want to put a resistor on our emitter to prevent thermal runaway. Thermal runaway works as the hotter the transistor gets, the more it is going to conduct, and the more it conducts, the hotter it's going to get. So we need a way to stop that. And we, we do that quite simply with a resistor. Again, see how the complexity here is growing? We can forget about all of that if we just switch over to a MOSFET. So I'm going to pull out our little components here. Yeah, that baby's a little warm. And we're going to bring in a MOSFET. Now you want to be careful how you touch these. These guys are a little bit static sensitive. Now this one is the IRFZ34N. You can grab yourself a, a data sheet and take a look at it. But it'll work in our case. It's not ideal, but it will work. And it is set up gate, drain, and source. So our control is going to be the gate, we are going to drain from our power supply, and source to our bulb. So let's get this plugged in here, I'm just going to pull this out. So drain is pin number two, the center pin, put that there like that. Our gate is the first pin, we'll put that there as such. And then we can plug our bulb back in to the third pin. And finish our circuit by going back to ground. And now we should be able to power that up. There we go. If we take a look up here at our power supply once again, we're at 291 milliamps, roughly the same current. I mean, yeah, it's a little different, but no big deal. Very nice. Now, you can put a heat sink on here. Again, we are still dissipating about the same amount of current. But this is going to handle more. General rule of thumb when we're talking about MOSFETs versus BJTs is MOSFETs are better for more power. When, you, when, when you're using more current, you want to go with a MOSFET. They just simply handle it a little bit better. Also remember what we talked about with that um, our capacitively coupled gate there. If we remove the voltage you see that we've removed the voltage from the gate, but our MOSFET is still uh, conducting and our circuit is still going. If that's something that you don't want to happen, you can simply put, say, a 10K resistor between the gate and the ground, and that'll solve that problem. Well, I hope that answers your question, Mr. Kapoor. Again, this is a really deep subject, but that should give you enough information to keep going. Now, you guys noticed this here. I'm sure you did. I mean, it's sit here rather prominent. PCB Way celebrating uh, their five years in business, and we did that nice little goodie bag opening. Well, here's the thing. I like money. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't, right? They've offered me a contract, a one-year contract. Haven't decided if I'm going to do it yet, but I probably will. This is the actual contract right here, 12 months. They just want me to make a couple videos a month for them, to which they'll pay me $250 a video. So here's my question to you guys. Should I do it? Um, there's no real downside to the contract. They they don't want me to work with any other PCB uh, manufacturers, and I, I don't do a lot of PCB work anyway, so it's that's not really a big deal to me. But what do you guys think? Do you think I'm be a, I, I, I'd be selling out if I did that? I really want your opinion, because you know 
even though this is my channel, this channel is for you. You are the guys that consume what I make here. And I, you know, you guys know I read all the comments. So I don't want to alienate anybody. If you guys think this is a good idea, let me know. If you think it's a stupid idea, let me know. And uh, we'll move on from there. Okay? All right. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment and share. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And, you know, hit the little bell daily whopper there if you want to be notified. But you, you already know if you've been watching. I make a video every other day. Unless something bad happens and, you know, I got them kidney stones rolling around. So, anyway. That's it. I'm out. Peace.